one moment. This thing's not as stable as I thought. Set up. Looks like um, Twitch has added some new stuff to the dashboard, actually, since the last time I streamed. Let's just check. Apparently I'm offline. Am I, am I recording? Or did I actually start streaming? No, oh, apparently I am streaming. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it says I'm online. I don't know, I guess just the stats thing doesn't really matter. Like, I don't really care about the stats that much because that's not what I'm to effectively use Twitch to record a uh, bunch of playthroughs and uh, my thoughts just in case I forget them while I'm playing. So yeah, I'll be going through a bunch more um, games from the Awful Jam. The theme this year is Unnecessary Sequels. And uh, there are a lot of entries this year. Like, a lot of them. About 61, actually, something like that. Uh, however, I won't end up playing all 60 in one go. That would be ridiculous. So I've already played 10 of them. I did intend to play another 10, but it looks like one of them uh, doesn't have a download link. If it does, I couldn't find it. So uh, that's a bit of a pity. Let me just uh, adjust my positioning here. Okay, um, let's get this started then. So the first game is just called Two. Just let's just run them. Let's see what happens. Notice, notice that my okay. How loud is that? That's. I think that I think that works. Really digging this music so far. Okay, unlike yesterday, I actually have the awful gems logo on top of the game window. And it was underneath it last time. Whoops. Page. Okay, it does. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this is Basketball, basketball 2, submitted by Hammerbro Girido, it is. And shoot, sprint. The elevator pitch is shoot, sprint, shove, dunk, and arson your way to victory. Ah. Yeah, it wouldn't be a game jam game, or game jam from something awful if there wasn't at least one basketball game, it feels like. We've got options. I don't really understand. It's a really huge text. I do. I'm slightly confused. Um. Okay, so space is jump, but I haven't really figured out how to do anything else. Okay, West is just also jump. Do you click to do anything? All right, let's see if uh, so we've got here. So jump, shoot. 
currently pad zero. Hmm. Okay, so jump is space. Uh, grab is E. Swap players is tab. Turbo is shift. Shove is R. I'm just carrying a guy. <laughs> I, think, I think my player was just sort of getting beaten up off screen. Wait, so you can pick him up. Can you throw him? You can pick up your teammate? But there's just a second ball now, I guess. I'm so confused. <laughs> it's happening. Whoa, God. Okay, that's not where I wanted the ball to go. There are corpses in here now. Can I dunk a corpse? No. How do you control the ball? Um, how can you control where the ball goes? I've just got the ball and the corpse now. Fuck. Wait, you can just pick up the... You can pick up the player that's... Oh my god. So you can pick up the player that's holding the ball? Yeah, thanks for the corpse, buddy. It doesn't really feel like you've got any control over where the... Um... Over where the ball goes and you throw it, but the AI's got basically perfect control. Oh my god. Yeah, like, what was that? I was holding towards the basket when I pressed throw there, so why didn't it go towards it? How do you... I mean, this is such a bizarre, fun game. I've just... It's just a pity about the controls. They're just so... confusing. Yeah, like... What is it that governs where you throw the ball? Yeah, no, you're not putting anything. Ah, oh. okay, maybe you are. Look, I just want to do some sick dunks here. Can I just... Wait, is it going in the opposite direction that I'm holding? Is that how you... All right. Well, this is this is quite a fun, silly game, but I feel like the controls kind of ruin it.
like you just don't really have well it's just yeah the point of the matter is what control like I can pick up um I can pick up corpses and stuff easier than I can actually I can manipulate corpses in general easier than I can control the ball which seems a little a little silly <laughs> All this shit is just happening without me pressing a button. Oh well. What have you said about that one? Oh, and it crashed. this again? Yeah, there you go. Good. This is to be the second this, this is the second Godot game that um I played, which just crashes whenever you uh whenever you close it. It's weird. Oh hello. <laughs> Say hello to my uh audio mixer, I guess. Alright. Okay, well, that was basketball too. So, what's this one? CDK. Oh, right, yeah, City Death Kill. Uh, so this would be the second um, GTA sequel, uh, that I think. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it would be. I can't remember the name of the other one, though. Uh, the other one had issues with its art, and it had actually really nice uh, vehicle controls, I thought. It's just a pity that not everything else came together quite so much. Anyway, uh, let's see, let's see, this one's okay. Okay, so Sea Death Kill 2, a violent mashup of two violent games. Uh, a mashup of the PS3 GTA games, or PS1 GTA games, sorry, and Hotline Miami. Alright, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, okay, let's uh, give it a shot. I'm going to give you a rundown of the basics before we go. I just want to, I want you to make chaos, not get yourself killed like an idiot, so pay attention. Well, this one is already a lot clearer um, where you are. Uh, shooting feels good. Pretty hard to hit people though. Doesn't really seem to be a difference between the weapons. Uh, I like the feedback for when you actually kill enemies. Also, dodge while holding space on a skate. You won't be able to shoot, though. If you get out of your skateboard, it can hit people, knocking them over. Oh, God. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like how this controls. Oh god. I think I might have made a mistake.
it's kind of hard to hit people. I'm not really sure why. I don't know if it's because I'm bad or what. So, yeah, are there actually other weapons? Ah, oh, there are. Okay. It... I don't know. I don't know what it is. The shooting feels good, but it's surprisingly hard to hit people. I think it's because they're such small targets and they move so quickly. Also, this is a bit of a difficulty, uh... This is a bit... Well, this is supposed to be the first mission, isn't it? That's, uh... It's, <laughs> it's just a little bit harsh. Is there a way to get health back? Uh, it seems like riding a skateboard is suicide. Hmm... Yeah, I don't know about this. Do spins, dodge through bullets. What? I am greatly confused. I do like how the music changes when the combat starts, though. That's pretty nice. How, do you, how are you supposed to do anything with a skateboard, though? Like, the only way to get one is to start, well, start complete pandemonium, it feels like. Oh, there's one over here. Okay, so... Do... Uh, I really do not like these skateboard controls. The way you move forward, it seems, is you have to, like, tap continually. It's really weird. I mean, steering is fine, but the actual acceleration stuff is just odd. So, how does one... How does one dodge through bullets? I don't know, it's just kind of bothering me, because it's like, maybe there is something cool to this game, and I'm just missing it. You know, like... Maybe the game just does a really bad job of introducing the mechanics to you. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it feels like the game's trying to encourage me to get onto the skateboards to do stuff, but I just... I just don't know what I'm doing on it. Okay, so space spins. Okay, so whilst you're spinning, you're invincible. But, I mean, they fire so many bullets that I'm not sure it really matters. Like, look at this chaos. 
Wait, are they killing each other? Ah. Oh. Okay, so you're not completely immortal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. Like, graphically, it's better than the other GTA clone, but... Uh, it's got a number of its own issues. Like, one of the things is I felt uh, enemies was, like, super durable. Maybe you're supposed to, like, um, get other weapons? Like, can you get a weapon from the people you kill? I mean, the shotgun feels just about as weak as the pistol does. It's like, it just doesn't really feel impactful at all. Like, look at this. Look at how he moves. It's like... It's so hard to hit him! Okay, so I can't get his weapon. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Play a lot of playability issues seem to sort of ruin this. That's the way I feel about it anyway. Otherwise, it's pretty neat. It controls okay. It's just really hard. It's like, come on, this is the first level and you throw enemies that are literal tanks at me. Oh well, I can move on from that one. So yeah, that was uh, City Death Kill 2. Not bad, just really hard. And like I said, I think it's a little bit mired by some um, playability issues. Like, um, for example, the enemies move around so quickly and they take so many hits that it does feel like it takes forever to take any of them out. Now maybe there's a specific order you're supposed to take the enemies out. Maybe I'm meant to ignore the guards and shoot civilians. I don't know, but it feels like civilians are bullet sponges as well. So that guy that was standing next to that car, I was like, fired maybe four bullets into him before he finally keeled over. Which, I don't know, I feel for a game that's trying to be that impulsive. Uh, you know, I was, I was, I was almost expecting uh, the game to play more like um, Miami Hotline, or Hotline Miami, <laughs> to in the sense that everybody would just sort of die in one bullet, including the player. Um, I did like the hectic nature of it. I did like how the uh, enemies would fight each other, though. But that was pretty cool. Um, and like I said, I, I did feel like the game it was trying to encourage me to get onto a skateboard. Uh, but... I don't know, I found the skateboard controls so kind of iffy that... that honestly, most of the time I didn't want to get on it. Like, I don't know, something put me off about wanting to use the thing. Um, yeah. Oh, well, so that was City Death Kill. Um, so, Exodus. It's a Unity game. Was the previous one a Unity game? I'm sure it was. Well, that flashed up my desktop very, very briefly. Tisk tisk.
Okay, it's just called Exodus. Um, oh no, no global sound. It's going to disappear whilst trying to position for the game. All right, okay. How many times can you save mankind? A space saga with countless sequels. After you finish the game, it's an unnecessary sequel to play again. This is the second game that's tried that angle. That's interesting. Uh, the first one was that platforming game, which unfortunately is nowhere near ready. I'm sure that's actually set up right. Yeah, it looks good. Not just staring at the title screen. Uh, hey, sweet. Stays me saying some contact details. Cool. Simple options. Planet Earth, year 2030. Mankind has discovered a suspicious activity in space. Unseen asteroid flow is threatening our survival. Whole civilization has united to build a spaceship and set sails to another part of the galaxy. The only way to succeed is to gather rare compounds from asteroids to build a colony ship. Help humanity stay alive. Okay. Drag left and right to rotate the star system. All right. Cool. Um, avoid asteroids hitting the planet with life. Gather debris to launch spaceship into space. Power-ups from radioactive debris gives your shield or double money. Oh, okay. Get much time to react to some of them. Oops. <laughs> oh, God. Like, I'm, the orbiting mechanic is neat, but I'm actually kind of hating it, because it kind of fucks with um, your perception about where you're moving. It's hard to describe. Otherwise, I think it's actually a pretty neat idea. The failure condition seems to be a tad harsh, seeing as, like, what am I supposed to do? Like... How long am I supposed to survive for, even? Oh, you're supposed to pick an upgrade? Something? Considering you move with the mouse, trying to buy anything from the shop seems like... Kind of suicide. In the sense that you're pretty much forced to take your hands off the wheel in order to interact with upgrades and stuff. Um, did the music stop? Oh god, the asteroids actually have gra gravity mechanics. Ah. Uh. This is really neat, but like I said, uh. God. I think. Oh, hello. What's this about? Oh, so that gives me a shield, I think. It lasts very long. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess this is another one of those games that starts off really damn difficult. Um, last chance.
Oh, okay, you're supposed to press a button. <laughs> well, there we go, I beat it! Yay! Again, though, the fact that you have to interact with UI elements by taking your hands off the wheel, um, that kind of sucks. All right, on to the sequel. They discovered suspicious activity in space once more. Yeah, I kind of like the simple gameplay of this. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot to this. Uh, game, not really, but like I said, I like the simple controls and the uh, the idea is really nifty. But uh, but I think I think honestly, my only complaint, is, only two complaints, I guess, would be the difficulty is kind of weird. But the fact that the uh, planets are um, orbiting whilst you're trying to rotate the system around to avoid asteroids is kind of annoying. It's very neat, but annoying. And uh, the fact you have to take your, the fact that you have to uh, interact with the menus with the mouse, whereas obviously you have to, but it, but interacting with menus doesn't stop the game. Means that you can't dodge, you you can't possibly dodge asteroids and interact with the menu at once. So that's kind of that's kind of lame. That was quite cool. Okay, so what's next? I didn't think these quite fast so far. Oh, yeah. Maybe not going as quickly as I thought. <laughs> Started this about nine, didn't it? Uh, yeah, with 30 minutes in already. Blimey. It's ridiculous. It doesn't feel like I spent 10 minutes on each game somehow. Uh, ah, this one I expect might be a little longer. Just anticipating from... Uh, screenshots I've seen of it. So this is Forest Path. So the Forest Path. Um, it's a photo-based visual. Oh, okay, maybe it won't be that long. Uh, where your choices don't seem to matter until you realize that in part two you have to go back and deal with it. Well, this is a love game. Uh, how do we actually Launch a love two D. Uh, do I click on the? I think let's try this. this work. Uh, well, it's doing something. Okay. Alright, so, Forest Path. Oh, okay. I was trying to click on the menu. That doesn't work. So, uh... No sound? Seemed like it. You're at the entrance to the State Park. Uh, you can enter the forest now. Start hiking. So, 
Like, wait, do I click on that? Uh, you're on the main thoroughfare. The entrance to the park is ahead of you. This is a bus stop. Wait for the bus. This is the bus stop. It is currently fulfilling its purpose, as the bus is stopping here. <laughs> the destination says Santa Carla. All right, let's just go on the bus. Fuck it. You are on the bus. Keep riding. As you get close to the terminal, a grizzled old man stands up and gives you a hard look. You'd better not be going all the way to Santa Carla. Full of vampires, that town is. You know what? Uh... Oh, wait, I can't select go to Santa Carla? I want to go to Vampire Land. How do I go to Vampire Land? Shit. Wait, did I do it? There are a few places of business here, but you do not require any of their services. You come to the one stoplight of the town. Most houses in this town seem to be set back in the hills. This looks like one of the more populated streets. The road descends at a forested area into dry hillside. There are many more houses here. Now this is all great and all, but I didn't want to get off the bus. I wanted to, like, Vampire Land might have been more fun than um, well, I'm effectively playing narrated Google Maps, it feels like. Okay, this road leads up to the backwards. Road dead ends at a gate. You can probably find a trail in the forest if that's what you want. It's a narrow path that cuts downward from the road toward the forest. It appears to be a turnip entrance to the park. The path continues down the hill. You expect it will soon connect to the main park entrance. You are at the entrance of the state park. <laughs> Deja vu. <laughs> I'm going back to the bus. Actually, can I do that? This is a bus stop. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can go and wait for the bus again if I want. I suppose I might as well actually go in the forest. Turns out this game is the Stanley Parable once more. The trail starts off in a forest of giant trees. Okay. The trail slopes gently downhill and hiking is easy. Now and then you have to hop over a fallen tree. You marvel at the trunks that stretch far into the sky. You wonder how these old trees must be, oh, how old these trees must be to grow to such a height. There is a pretty flower here. Look at the flower. You get closer look at the flower. In the distance you hear a low howl. Okay. One walk down trunk is surrounded by a ring of smaller trees. It almost looks like an altar of some sort. The trail makes a turn here. Through the trees ahead you spot a small pond. The pond is overgrown with grass and has a fetid smell. There's not a lot I can do in this game so far. As hard to follow past this point, it is increasingly overgrown. You realize the forest has grown quieter. It almost sounds as if someone or something is shadowing your steps. The trail runs in and out of the creek here. The water level is quite low. Air to the left is a barely trick of waterfall. Hmm. A monstrous creature bounds down the creek towards you. It appears to be something wolf-like, but far larger than you expect. You spare no time and race back to the waterfall. It would seem that climbing out is your only choice now. Wait, I, I can climb the waterfall? Uh, God, what am I, am I wearing the, the fish suit from Zelda? 
You make it about halfway up the wall and realize it's a bit slicker than you thought. Below, the wolf creature is snarling and trying to snap at your feet. Any mistake now would spell a hideous end for you, and you can feel your grip starting to slip as your palms start to sweat. Instead, you simply move your hands upwards, ever upwards. You find feeling for new handholds, and almost, almost easier than if you were looking. Eventually, you reach the top and realize you cannot even hear the wolf anymore. Okay, so there's UFO now. That's some overexposure right there. Oh, it's still the bread. Uh, there is a tremendous burst of light in front of you. Something has blasted the ground, and you're pretty sure that you weren't just seeing things. Hmm. I mean, this is a lot of nice photos. Oh, okay. Okay, so I guess the UFO is shooting at me now. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just going to have to give up on this at this point. I mean, maybe this goes somewhere. I mean, okay, I am being chased around by a wolf and uh, now I'm being shot at by aliens, apparently. But, I don't know. Uh, it might just be a simple case of um, to visual novels. Um, but if I was to comment, I'd probably say this kind of drags. Like, okay, you've got events going on, but it just seems to take forever to get to them, and it's not, and it's, uh, and that time spent isn't really spent setting these up in an interesting way, I think. But I'm not especially good at uh, telling stories myself, so like I could really give. Narrative writing advice. Run around trying to avoid the shots around you. She... I think the lack of sound is probably not helping as well, so it really does feel like I'm just moving through a slideshow. That's a pity. Uh, if, if the, if, I mean, if the game creator took all these photos themselves, well, that's a decent effort, because they took a lot of photos, and a lot of pretty nice photos as well. But yeah, no one's commented on this game yet. I, think I was trying to wonder if there was uh, anything to this game I had missed. What's the game page say? Uh, part one is a visual novel. Part two is a side-scrolling game. What? Okay, let's try that one out. Something to that. Because part one, I will be brutally honest, bored me to tears. Okay, let's play part two. Um. Stop the werewolf. Avoid detection. Um. Oh, okay, I can move down. It's hard to tell if I'm in front of the ground or not. I, I'm guessing I'm not, because I can't push my way through. But I'm sort of slowly going through anyway, so... 
yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually inside the ground, so the collision detection is a little. It's a little bit weird. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think this is finished, is it? Time loop violation. What did I do wrong? Oh, I see. I get it now. So I'm guessing that this is the player? Like, from the first thing? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It just feels like there wasn't... Um... The goals aren't really entirely clear here. Stop the... This guy? It's pretty hard for me to stop him. Let's see if anything happens if I get close to the werewolf. In about 20 years. We're getting there. And nothing happens. Can I... Some buttons do anything? No. Oh, okay. I can... I can shoot it. Yeah, I'm slightly confused. So yeah, um, the goals don't seem to be terribly clear there. Um, also, I noted that, you sh that even though you can shoot, the shooting direction seems kind of set in stone. Like, you can only shoot forwards slightly. Uh, which means, inevitably, you're going to end up being detected by the player, so... Yeah. I don't know, that needs a lot of work. Ah, that was kind of rough. I don't know, from a name like the Forest Path and from the uh picture that there was of it, I was I was half expecting it to be a walking simulator of some kind. <laughs> I'm mildly disappointed that it wasn't. Uh, what it was was remarkably unfinished, unfortunately. Alright, so what else we got? Right, so this one's called Hyrule Fishing. I'm sure I had a window. Ah, no, my bad. It's Lake Hylia Bomb Chew Fishing. Why does this need internet access? Let's find out. Oh, okay, maybe not. It's got mouse lock. Oh, it's probably for accessing a high score table, I see it. Alright, well, first I've actually got to get the thing, thing detected. Does that work? Looks like it works. And I like what I see so far. Right, well.
No instruction, just get right on in, huh? Alright. I'm going to assume the dark spots are fishies. <laughs> it's kind of like um, the, uh, th this uh, reeling stuff in mechanic kind of reminds me of um, what's it called? The Raft? It's a bit refreshing change to have a game where which doesn't explain the controls be somehow kind of intuitive without explanation. It's really nice in games like that, I think. Can I just drive over this stuff? No, you have actually got to reel it in. So am I supposed to get the fish or the rupees? Like, I get a nice sound when I get the uh, rupees. I get nothing at all when the fish... when I get the fish in. Yeah, I don't actually really in. Same. Got to reel it in, mate. Can you, is it like a raft in which you can sort of have drag multiple things in? Let's see. Ah, you can. All right. Oh, I fucked that up. Oh no, I accidentally, uh... Oh, I'm gonna trigger a third one as well, aren't I? Oh, I'm not. You know what I'm doing? I am actually accidentally firing the rod way further than uh, it looks like I'm firing it. The uh, targeter can. Wait, how far can this targeter go? Okay, so there is actually a limit. So, is there a goal here, or am I just. Doing this forever. I'm actually curious now because I expected there to be some kind of um, time limit like a lot of fishing games have, but this just seems to go on forever. Hello. Different looking. Do I want that? Or does it want me? Well, I can't seem to do anything to it, so... dungeon over here or something. Uh, 
nothing in here looks like oh, just this um, just this plant I don't know. So, I mean, I mean, obviously, visually, it's low poly and it's kind of tongue in cheek, but um, I kind of like it. I like it graphically. The game controls really nice. The sound is really nice. Just, uh, just seems to lack any kind of goal. Maybe I'm missing something. Let's check the game's page and see if it says anything. Uh, like fishing, but with bombs. Oh, that's it. That's all the page says. Oh well. Let's move on. Yeah, but that was... That's really nicely made. It's just, uh, like I said, it's unfortunate that it just didn't really seem to have any kind of aim. So it didn't really feel like there was a win condition. Uh, maybe you could die? I mean, I saw you had hearts, but uh, it didn't really feel like there was any threats. Like, the monster fish didn't seem to do anything to me. I, I saw I saw a mine somewhere. But I couldn't find it again when I was uh, sailing about. I don't know. Maybe I just didn't see it. Oh well. So NET two. Have it window. Thank you very much. Wow, not even a title screen, just gonna go straight into it, huh? Okie dokie. Is this gonna be Unity Portal or something? Actually, I heard some people comparing it to Empty Chamber. This is a game I've got. But I've never actually gotten around to playing. This is fucking with me, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> it's just a physics puzzle? It's a physics puzzle. What does button do? How do I button? What a button do? Man. See, the games are, a game like this, I'm frightened to go anywhere because I'm just not sure what's going to change. Ah. 
sorry, I couldn't resist. As soon as I saw that guy dancing, it was the first thing I thought of. I've no idea if that was even audible. <laughs> Alright, so, what's changed down here then? Uh, nothing. So yeah, this is a game that's uh, deliberately messing with your sense of space. Feels like I could use more sound. I don't know, maybe that would ruin it. At least some atmosphere. Hmm. Spoon. Spoons. Can't open that. Oh no, this is messing with me. Hmm. So am I just stuck walking in this circle forever now? Sit back. Thanks for playing. Alright, well, that's pretty neat. I mean, I can't really expect too much out of a month's... Um, work on a project like that. I'd imagine designing levels uh, for this kind of thing would be heck. But yeah, it's pretty nifty. Uh, mouse sensitivity is 100%. Mouse is not inverted. Press Q while pause to close the game. Uh, did that actually broadcast any of that? Anyway, it looks like everything worked. Okay, cool. <laughs> Alright, um, so what's next? That's a good question. What's next? There up. Sky Pal 3. Um, gosh, I don't recognize this at all. It's like a... Oh, SDL. Okay. That's that. Tom Plarpenter's Sky Pal 3. Is this is this another basketball game? Oh god. <laughs> hey guys, it's your old friend Sky Pal here. Over the years, I've accomplished many great things. I was once the greatest b baller of all time. <laughs> god damn it! Okay, 
A and D to spin and mouse to windmill arm. Use the mouse to spin to win and dunk the ball. Okay. Oh. We've got about 30 seconds left until the bomb explodes. Cut the green wire! Lol, but I'm colorblind. Uh, click the wires to cut them. Good enough. <laughs> and now I'm on to my next great challenge. Dog sledding training in Antarctica. A friend of mine works at a research base there. He said that he could help me scrape off some of this rust and get ready for the Olympics. Welcome to the Antarctic research base. Uh, the Antarctic Research Base Acheron. Sorry about the wait. Things are a bit crazy around here right now. Anyway, let's get your stuff and get you settled in. Ah, oh, yes, thank you very much, Hat Lord. So what's all the ruckus about? Our team has just found something very interesting in the ice, not far from here. It's definitely not a shape-shifting alien that mimics you... Oh, sweet puppy Jesus, what the hell is going on? Wait, I know how to handle this. I've trained my whole life for this. First, I've got to open him up and then defuse the monster's bomb. Click the fiends to cut them. <laughs> And now, dunk the monster's head into this oddly and conveniently placed hobo fire. Oh god, dog, stop spinning! Stop spinning! No! An explosion rocks the base as Skypal detonates TNT, hoping to stop the beast. I don't know if I'm in it, or I'm me, or if I'm it thinking I'm me, or I just don't know. I can't risk contaminating the rest of the world. I think I'll just take a nice long nap right here. Oops. Best in rest in rest in peace, little puppers. The end, or is it? Um. No, that doesn't seem to be the end. That was quite silly. I mean, I feel like for a game like that, it's uh, kind of, I don't know, I think I feel like maybe there should have been a few more minigames. There could have been more minigames, but that's not, I guess that's not really a terribly clever comment to make. It is what it is. It's just a silly game of you trying to dunk things and diffuse bombs clumsily as a dog. Can't really complain about that. Uh, Supreme Defender franchise. And then there's only one more game. At least for this session. The publisher could not be verified. Are you sure you want to run this software? A... Oh, I'm 
I would if I find the window again. Okay, there we go. Okay, fine. Let's scan it. I was pretty sure I did already, but just in case. Just as I thought, it's fine. Probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, windowed, please. Go straight into it. That is quite loud. Supreme Defender. Okay, I'm already confused. What am I supposed to do? Uh... Okay, I've got the Pokeball. Now what? Got Chocolate Bar! So why is the monster breaking all the boxes with chocolate bars in him anyway? So this is another game where each level is a sequel to the previous one. Why does it take him so long to climb down the box? I don't understand. Why can't I not always click on these? Like, I'm clicking on these boxes right now and it's not doing anything. What's this all about? So, pretty much you just... Oh, can he only move to the uh, buildings that are right next to him? So wait, do I even need to bother doing any of this? Like, can I just walk straight to the monster and just spam click to win? Yeah, looks like it. I mean... Uh. Oh, 
Okay, that hurt quite a bit. It's the same monster as in the first film. Come on. Game, whatever. Now this is an unnecessary sequel. I would guess it just goes on and on and on until um, Defender Man dies. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if I. Uh, I'm just gonna run straight to the monster. Fuck it. They're close to being able to kill me. This one. There we go. Rest in peace, Defender Man. Tokyo, his statue is dead. It just goes on. Okay, I think I've had enough of that. I really liked the style of it. Uh, I mean, the gameplay was intuitive enough. It just uh, wasn't a lot to it. Uh, not sure how I really feel about how long it takes for a Defender Man to climb down a building. Uh, I, suppose, I suppose the point of the game is kind of a choice between getting upgrades and then just running straight to the boss, although really there doesn't seem to be any punishment for just heading straight to the boss and doing it that way, apart from being a bit weaker for the next encounter, I guess. I'm not really sure if there's a good ending to that game. <laughs> Might be, who knows. Oh, so that was Supreme Defender franchise. Uh, and finally... Or is it finally? Yes, it's finally. Uh, there's an EXE in this folder. I just realized that's an uh, auto-extracting archive. Uh, so yeah, this is the last one. King's Descent. Which is another Unity game, so I shouldn't have to change it. Okay, so Descent. Um, descend into an old dungeon with your king and slay all enemies you encounter. Craft mighty chess pieces which support you on your journey. Okay. Uh, you control a king who descends an old dungeon on your journey. You can craft mighty chess pieces, destroy all enemies, and move your king to the door to reach the next level of the dungeons. Okay, so this is kind of RPG chess, sort of, I guess. Uh, you can move your chess key chest. You can move your chest pieces by dragging and dropping them on the uh, fields of the chessboard. The possible target fields are highlighted green. Move your king one field to the right. Each turn, chess pieces can move exactly once. In this case, the enemy did not do anything. However, later the enemy will move and some may even attack your king. I'm trying to. So even if there's no enemies, you have to click turn done. That's a little strange. Craft new chess pieces to support him. Chests can contain recipes. You need to craft new chess pieces. Uh, you need 300 dust. Recipe broke. Craft your rook now. 
Uh, you're the door. No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, the crafted rook is now placed on your crafting tail. You can drag and drop it anywhere. Give it a go, I guess. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm really not look not a fan of having to click turn done every time there's no enemies. Like if there's enemies, it's fair enough, but uh, without them, it seems kind of unnecessary. Uh, I got a rook. I can make one, so I might as well. I mean, the enemies don't seem to be moving. So my rook died. You're not done yet. Kill all enemies. Okay. Uh, I... So monotonous having to click this button every time. How do I? So I'm done here, right? How do I? How do I get out? Why can't I leave? Um. Did I break it? I think I might have broken it. Huh. Hmm. Got you starting. Chance. So why are the uh, pawns able to attack the uh, rook from such a long distance? So it doesn't seem like the um, enemies are doing it, They're just standing there. I don't know, I think something I'm slightly disappointed about is I was expecting the, uh... Okay, because it looks like if you try and access a door before you've met the conditions to clear the room, uh, the door no longer detects if you're standing next to it, and it's impossible to clear the stage. That's a pretty nasty bug. Uh... I don't know, when I saw that it was like a chess-based battle system, I was like, oh, yeah, this has got potential to be pretty interesting, but unfortunately it doesn't seem like there's all that much depth to it. Like, I was expecting the damage and stuff to be done by doing, you know, actual chess moves, so moving your rook uh, on top of a pawn or something. And then um, only actually being threatened by pawns if you're standing um, diagonally either side of them. Which means it's safe to stand st uh, directly in front of the pawn and stuff like that. And if there were knights, you know, if, if the like, okay, so you just don't stand 
on the spot that a knight can jump to can't take damage from them, stuff like that. And the enemies would be trying to reposition themselves so that they could damage you. I admit that something like that the uh, might be quite difficult to program the AI for, especially within a month. Um, complete lack of animations is kind of annoying. Also this, this sucks. But this is just straight up not fun, having to click this button over and over again. You chose a different path and cannot enter this room. What? Oh, okay. Uh, do I have enough dust for a boy? I dust people. Bring him in. This is tricky. I'm not actually sure there's enough health to uh, defeat these things. Oh, what's that? Okay, so I guess the enemies did something, but it all happened instantaneously, so I couldn't tell what it was. Well, I've kind of checkmated myself, haven't I? Because there's no way that I can actually... Nowhere I can move where I'm not going to get knocked out in the next turn. And you need to start again from the beginning! What the hell? That's a little bit harsh. Oh, that's... Honestly, I, I feel like um, from what I'd seen of it, I was expecting a little bit more, but it's it's neat. And the, at least the idea itself is really neat. The execution, I think, needs a little work. Uh, the lack of animations and feedback kind of sucks. And, I don't know, like I said, I wish the battle system itself was just a little bit more interesting than it is. So I'm not even really sure how on earth you're supposed to clear the last room. Unless you can like, I know you can't rerun uh, previous areas of the dungeon, can you? So, yeah. I don't know, cool idea, but it's, like I said, it needs a lot of work. Right, well, that's it for this um, pile of games. <laughs> now, really, I have to split these up because, like I said before, there are so dang many of them this time. Um, how many are there? Like I said, about 60, there's about 61 games in total. And so now with today's lot and yesterday's, that, not well, yesterday's, uh, the previous lot, uh, that's 20 games down. Uh, like I said, there was one other game. Unfortunate. Just for some reason. Which one that is? Let's see, King's Descent, T, Sky Power, Choco Trigger. Yeah, so Choco Trigger was the. I couldn't work out how to play. Um, rather, not even work out how to play. Work out how to download. You go to its. Uh, game page. It's got a download button, but that button doesn't do anything. I mean, other people have managed to get it. Yeah, I mean, I'm clicking the download link now, and I, I can't get it. It just says, thanks for downloading, but it's not downloading anything. Check it's not actually added something to download, so then just complete it. Nope, nothing here. Oh well.
Oh, that's a pity. Um, all right, well, I'm going to wrap it up there, like I said. And uh, but there's still plenty more games to go through. Uh, I'll see about writing up some feedback for the uh, for each of the games that I can have any feedback on, or I do have any ideas on. Uh, just looking ahead a bit to see what else there is coming up. Braveheart 2 Braveheart? Uh, what? I've already played that one, haven't I? Yeah, I did. That was the uh, game I played yesterday. Last time, even. Okay, yeah, what's happened is just a couple of games have just gone up in the rankings, that's all. I'm using the um, unrated page for the Game Jam uh, to try to go through the games from least rated uh, first. So... Um, after the next 10, it's going to be basically the top half of the games uh, that have been commented and rated so far. That doesn't necessarily mean they're the best games. It's just that they're the games that have got the most attention, for whatever reason. <laughs> How the Grinch Stole the Japanese High School Cultural Festival? Oh god. I'm uh, mildly looking forward to that one. Some other highlights include Bounce the Raccoon, um, Super Screen Fighter, that's another one that I'm uh, highly anticipating checking out, Sports Dog, uh, we played basketball too. Wait. Did we play basketball? There's two basketball twos. I just noticed that. One by Hammerbro, and the other by Some Brothers Studio. Hmm. Is it actually a different entry? It is a different entry. So there's two basketball twos. We are not done with b-ball. Alright, well, that'll be all for now. Um, cheers for hanging out. Uh, if any of you uh, the game developers, because I know that people can see in the Discord that I'm streaming, um, I hope any of the things I said might be helpful and that uh, my comments weren't too hurtful uh, if they were taken that way. I feel like uh, the comments I make, it's like, I worry that I'm being a bit too negative. Alright, cheers. Hang on.